the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Today we celebrate the 27th Sunday in ordinary time. During this Holy Eucharist, we remember all the intentions of our benefactors and of those who ask for our prayers. We pray for the peace in the world. Tomorrow is the first anniversary of the Israeli-Hamas war. We pray that this conflict may end soon. Tomorrow, Pope Francis is asking for our prayers and fast in this intention. And we will do this through the intercession of Our Lady of Rosary, which we'll be celebrating tomorrow. During the Holy Eucharist, we remember the following intentions. We pray for the successful board examinations for Fritzi Jane Salencio, for Ben Joseph Purganan. We also remember the intentions of S. Nasaga Rene Fernandez. We pray for the faithful departed for the soul of Pantaleon Molijon, Pedro Rodriguez, and Teresita Ua. In the beginning, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to my brothers and sisters, that I have great the sin in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done, and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most famous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
For you. 
shall you be and faithful.
the Pharisees approached Jesus and asked, Is it lawful for a husband to divorce his wife? They were testing him. He said to them in reply, What did Moses command you? They replied, Moses permitted the husband to write a bill of divorce and dismiss her. But Jesus told them, Because of the hardness of your hearts, he wrote you this commandment. But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, no human being must separate. In the house, the disciples again questioned Jesus about this. He said to them, Whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her. And if she divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. Brothers and sisters, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to the Lord Jesus Christ. Dear brothers and sisters, today's readings invite us to reflect on the fundamental truths of human existence about relationships, unity, and the call to live in communion with one another. They remind, they remind us of the very foundation of creation, marriage, and our shared vocation as children of God. In the first reading from the book of Genesis, we witness the creation of the first human couple, recognizing that it is not good for the man to be alone. God creates a suitable partner for Adam. The imaginary is rich and profound. Eve is created from Adam's rib, symbolizing their shared essence, unity, and equality. This serves as a beautiful reminder that men and women are, men, are made for one another, not in domination or subordination, but in mutual love, support, and companionship, a union where two individuals become one flesh. This truth underscores the fact that human beings are inherently relational. We are created for communion, not only with God, but also with one another. Whether in the context of marriage, family, friendship, or religious community, our lives are enriched when we live in the right relationship. When we love, we reflect the image of God who is love itself. In the Gospel from Mark, we are confronted with the difficult issue of divorce. The Pharisees come to Jesus and pose a question seeking to trap him. They are asking, is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? And in response, Jesus reaffirms the sanctity of marriage by referring back to the creation story in the book of Genesis. 
he reminds them that from the beginning God intended for marriage to to a be to be a lifelong indissoluble union what God has done together that no one separate. Unfortunately the current reality is that we live in a world where commitment is frequently overshadowed by individual desires for personal fulfillment. We live in the world where everything is temporary and disposable. We buy a computer or cell phone and when the new edition comes, we change it and the old one we put somewhere in the storeroom. People often move on from relationships when things get difficult, seeking newer and more convenient alternatives. But Jesus calls us to something higher, to a love that is not fleeting or based only on the feelings, but one that endures through all trials and challenges. Marriage is a sacrament, is a reflection of God's faithful love for his people, a covenant that mirrors Christ's unwavering commitment to the church. In a world that often prioritizes individual fulfillment over commitment, the gospel invites us to rediscover the beauty and value of enduring, self-giving love. As we reflect today on our readings, we see that they all point to the same truth, that we are created for communion, and mar marriage is a powerful sign of this. But it is not the only way in which we are called to live in a relationship. Each one of us, whether married, single, religious, or ordained, is called to live a life of love in communion with others. In our families, in our friendships, our workplaces, and our communities, we are called to reflect the love and unity of God. And marriage, like every vocation, requires sacrifice. It is not simply a romantic idea, but a daily commitment to love, to forgive, and to grow together. In the Gospel, Jesus reminds us that marriage is a serious, sacred bond not something to be entered into lightly or discarded when it becomes difficult. There is no expiry date. Marriage, like any relationship, requires constant care and commitment. It is not something that automatically thrives, but something that grows through daily acts of love, forgiveness, and self-giving. We are called to work on our marriages, to nurture them and to see them as a path to holiness. The Church teaches that the marriage is a vocation, a calling from God. Just as priest or religious sister dedicates their life to serving God and the Church, so too the married couples 
dedicate their lives to one another. The sacrament of marriage is a path to holiness, a way of growing closer to God through the love and service of one's spouse. In this way, marriage is not only about personal happiness, but also, and most of all, about building the kingdom of God. For those of us who are called to religious life and priesthood, our vocation is a call to unite our lives with Christ in a profound way. We are called to share in his mission of bringing salvation to the world. In our ministries, we become Christ's hands and feet. We become his voice and heart. Whether we are celebrating the Eucharist, offering reconciliation, or providing pastoral care, we must always remember that we are participating in Christ's saving work, in his mission. And this solidarity also calls us to humility. We need to remember that we too are on the journey of faith, that we are not set apart because of our own merit, but because Christ has called us to serve, because Christ have chosen, has chosen us. Our ordination or profession of vows is not the final destination, but the beginning of the life of service, sacrifice, and continual conversion. Dear brothers and sisters, as we reflect on today's readings, we are reminded that every vocation, whether it be marriage, religious life, a single life, is ultimately a call to love. Love is what makes our lives meaningful and fulfilling. It is true love that we participate in the very life of God. And at the heart of every vocation is the call to fidelity. For married couples, this means remaining faithful to their spouse. For us in a religious life and priesthood, it means being faithful to our vows and commitments. Jesus' word challenge us to take seriously the promises we have made to God, to the Church, and to those whom we serve. Just as marriage is a covenant that reflects God's faithful love, so too our vocation is a covenant, a lifelong commitment to live out the gospel in radical service. Psalm 128, which we listen to today, offers a beautiful vision of the blessings that come from a life rooted in love and in fidelity to God. It says, Your wife shall be like a fruitful vine, your children like olive plants, around your table. This image of the family life filled with joy, peace, and blessing is a vision of the harmony and flourishing that God desires for all of us. However, we know that this vision is not always easily realized that especially today there are many families who face many challenges, financial difficulties, misunderstandings, illnesses, and sometimes the breakdown of the relationships. 
Yet even in the midst of these struggles, God's promise remains. When we strive to live, live in love, when we seek God's will in our relationships, He blesses our efforts and grants us His peace. Dear brothers and sisters, as we go forth today, let us remember that it is Christ who sustains us in our relationships. Whether we are married or single, young or old, we are all called to live in communion with one another and with God. Our vocation, whatever form it takes, is both a gift and a responsibility. Whether we are called to marriage, religious life, or priesthood, we are called to live in deep communion with God and with others. Our lives must bear fruit, not for ourselves, but for the glory of God and the good of His people. In our struggles and in our joys, in our, in our triumphs and our failures, let us always turn to Christ, who is the source of all love, source of unity and strength. And may we look to Him for the grace to live out our vocation with faithfulness and love. And may our lives always reflect the love of God for the world. Amen. Amen. Now let us stand and let us renew our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, Born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten of me, consubstantial with the Father, through me all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnated of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sin was crucified under Pontius Pilate, He suffered death and was buried. And rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is the Lord and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in God. Holy Catholic and Apostolic Church, I confess my baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Today's readings have enabled us to appreciate the sacredness of marriage and its vital role in God's plan for humankind. Let us now pray for all families in the world to say, Lord, graciously hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. That the Church, under the leadership of Pope Francis and all the bishops, may successfully promote the unity and stability of the human family. Let us pray. Lord, graciously hear us. That all Catholic faithful may appreciate the sacredness of marriage and defend it against all attacks and deviations. Let us pray. Lord, graciously hear us. That all couples who are experiencing a crisis in their relationship may be able to overcome all difficulties through prayer and the concerns for their children, let us pray. Lord, graciously hear us. That all our families may mirror the holiness of the family of Nazareth 
and become an inspiration to all. Let us pray. Lord, have graciously hear us. That all teachers may appreciate their God-given vocation and actualize it with wisdom and love. Let us pray. Lord, have graciously hear us. That the church may continue to sustain in all ways a synodal lifestyle as a sign of co-responsibility, promoting the participation, the communion, and the mission shared among priests, religious, and lay people. Let us pray. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord God, in your plan for mankind, you wanted every family to be a sacrament of your fruitful love. Grant all families the abundance of your grace and the consolation of your presence. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Oh, 
whatsoever he did for me, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore this gift, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the Jew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Thank you. 
Let us pray. Grant us, Almighty God, that we may be refreshed and nourished by the sacrament which we have received, so as to be transformed into what we consume through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Oh, my God.